We'd like to introduce you today to the Mr. Drench, which is a hydraulic sprayer. This hydraulic sprayer usually uses three gallons a minute at 800 PSI with adjustable pressures. What has happened in the past is that we have produced these machines and they're out for 10, 15, and 20 years. At this point, we'd like to introduce you to some of the procedures in uh, application of material, but most importantly, this phase is dealing with the repair. And we want to show you some of the particular features of the machine, as well as how to do initial and field type repair. In order to salvage any of the material that you have left in the tank, we have created a system where you can both shut off the valve and the valve is located as is being uh, ad demonstrated. You can shut the tank valve off and then you have a quick coupler. And the quick coupler is built so that you're able to remove the actual pickup hose for the pump and it put on a back flush so that there is a quick coupler back flush that adapts to a three-quarter inch guard, uh, garden hose. This gives you the ability to flush all the working parts yet leave any excess material in the tank. On the inside of the tank there is a special pickup. You'll notice that we don't allow the material to drain down into the hose but that the vacuum on the pump actually picks up the fluid out of the sump. This gives you the ability to drain the tank down and have as little as a half to three quarters of a cup of your precious spray material left in the tank. And one thing we can point out right now is that we have the tank rolled. You'll notice that there are numbers on the tank to illustrate the gallons that are in the tank but we have the tank rolled to show how that you can clean the tank. If you'll take your high pressure spray and put some soap solution or something into a bucket and intake to the bottom of uh, the pump or to the intake of the pump, then you can take your high pressure gun with the high pressure nozzle that we have for you. And this special high pressure nozzle gives you the ability to flush and wash the tank. Then it can be build over completely so that you can drain whatever excess. You'll also notice that there is a three-quarter inch drain plug in the bottom which will give you the ability to drain the tank even into a bucket or any of those kind of things. One of the features of our machine is that you have in-tank agitation for mixing of your wettable powders and other chemicals. This feature is accomplished by the use of a bypass valve. And the bypass valve, along with the unloader, gives the ability for excess fluid to be pumped back into the tank. And through high pressure jets that are inside the tank, you're able to keep the bottom of the tank fluid agitated uh, with the bypass and excess pumping uh, accomplished by the, uh, the actual surplus fluid returning to the tank. The unloader valve is a critical part of the function of the pump. It both adjusts the pressure and gives a way for the pressure to bypass and it is a protection for the pump. Normally the unit is set up so that the fluid will move through the valve and up to the high pressure hose that we're dealing with. The unloader itself is the critical function that we want to show and here's how it works. Your gauge gives you the opportunity to see what pressure you're operating at. The gauge gives you the ability to adjust your pressure. Just because it goes to 1500 PSI, that does not mean that's the operating pressure of your machine. 800 PSI will accommodate the two horse or the horse and a half motor that is used on these machines. 
You'll notice now that the adjustment valve that we showed you is located on the pump itself and the big brass knob that it has a hex head on it is how you adjust the permanent pressure. Independent pressure adjustments can be made at a moment's notice by flicking the yellow handle and giving you from 25 pounds up to your regular preset operating pressures. The gauge is very important so that you know what you're doing. Also notice that there is a fluid within the gauge that is not fluid out of your tank. That is a operating oil preventative damper that prevents you from using a high pressure pump and damaging a dry gauge. The unloader valve is attached to the pump in this fashion and you'll notice that the unloader runs the material into the bypass and so we are removing the bypass portion of the unloader at this time. Secondly, in taking the unloader apart, it's very important to have a 7 16 socket wrench to remove the bolt that is beneath the unloader prior to taking apart the locking nut on top. You'll notice that there is a small washer and then when the machine is adjusted, there is a ball that has to be kept free and also there is a poppet that we'll show you in a moment. This poppet has a spring in it and that spring and plunger often will get corroded and needs to be replaced. This can all be done as a replacement system from Sebring Manufacturing. Now the reassembly will be exactly in reverse of what you've just done to disassemble. show the spring and plunger and the little uh, the little washer that goes down inside. You'll notice there's a washer and that is to prevent the adjustment pressure spring from wearing on the actual uh, piston. Then the spring and then the adjustment cap. There is an O-ring kit that will accommodate each of the O-rings that are used in the actual unloader and these will go bad over time and they'll crack and so that these small O-rings are very important to proper function and unload. It's very important to note that the unloader and all of these parts can function perfectly but one of the critical points that you should notice is the filter system. The filter system ha is comprised of a small screen, about 80, to 80 mesh, but it can be brought up to a 50 or a 30. Even with this fine mesh, it's possible for contaminants to get through and plug up the pump valves. So we'll show that shortly. But what happens is that if this machine is frozen at all, this little jar will crack. And as long as it doesn't leak fluid, most people say it's okay. However, even the smallest crack will cause air infiltration and cause the pump to surge. Another thing that happens is that the actual O-ring that seals the container 
gets dropped out and lost in the field. And it will, you will notice that if there are bubbles in the sight glass, then you are not going to have proper function of the machine. So you have the body, you have the filter system inside, and you have the actual O-ring, which must be in place to seal the strainer cup and keep it airtight. There is always a mystery about the sight glass on the end of the pump. People ask about the oil. Well, the oil is leveled to the red dot and do not overfill or you will cause oil to pop out of the top of the cap. This is the fill cap, this is the drain plug. So if you will kindly always set the oil level on the red dot, you'll be fine. The pump works with a sling action, which picks up the oil and keeps the push rods lubricated. The oil can be used, either the cat pump oil, which is available through Sebring, or you are able to use a 30 weight hydraulic oil. If the machine is frozen, you may experience the possibility of foam, a white milky substance appearing in the oil. This is water that comes through the intake seals because the seals have been pushed out of place by the freezing and water is seeping into the crankcase. If you will notice this, please drain the oil and repair the pump. For the disassembly of the pump, this is going to be a little tedious and so you'll see us going intermittent and Bear with us, but we'll show you the complete process. The first thing you need to do to disassemble the pump is to have a six millimeter Allen wrench. Don't try to use pliers or vice grips or anything else on your uh, bolts as you'll not be able to cause the bolts to come out clean and you'll not get good tension on them as you replace them. The function of the pump basically is that the water comes in through the back side of the pump proceeds through the cylinder and into the discharge side of the pump, which is your high pressure side. And as we go through this disassembly, you'll note that there are six head bolts. These head bolts also have a function of being able to be screwed into the actual pump frame uh, to help separate the bolts, uh, to help separate the pump from the motor. Now the head is coming apart and as you notice the head come apart you'll see that the actual cylinders are left in place, the retainers, and each one has a O-ring on. You must observe those O-rings at the time that you're taking the machine apart to make sure that you do not need a replacement O-ring kit. The three cylinder retainers house the cylinders, the actual plungers, and then there are inside the head a series of discharge valves. You'll notice that they come apart easily with an appropriate tool. The tool is a spanner wrench type device, but you can use a screwdriver or any other needle nose pliers or whatever, and you'll notice that they are taking apart the discharge, the high pressure discharge valve and the valve seat. And notice how it goes into place. It always has to be returned in the exact form so that the large flat cylinder is to your face as you're putting it together. Do not put it in upside down or you will damage the face of the actual discharge high pressure face on the valve when this nut that is in the pump comes forward and the cylinder will beat the face to a pulp and you will not be able to use that actual discharge valve anymore. These are rather expensive pieces. They're made of stainless steel, but they will function a long time 
if they're assembled properly. Now in disassembly of the head, it is a very important to follow this strict procedure. First, align and bend each of the cotter pins so that they can be removed easily. And as you remove the cotter pins, you're going to be getting ready to use a 10 millimeter wrench. And please use the kinds of wrenches that we recommend just for the safety of being able to keep all of the bolts in the best condition that you can. A replacement kit from CAT with all the genuine parts are very important to use as you repair your pump. We've disassembled one of the complete front part of the plunger assembly so as to show that there is a cotter pin and the new cotter pins that come with the unit should be used. Do not try to use old cotter pins uh, and try to put them back in place properly. Then there is a castle nut, a washer, a spring, and a, a spacer sleeve, and then the actual face. Inlet valve. Hmm? The inlet valve. And this will be a good point to watch that you do have the inlet valve in very good clean shape. We now have all of the cylinders and their assemblies, their front assemblies, removed. And what will happen now is removal of the intake manifold to check the intake valves. What is going to be showing up now is also the ceramic plungers. And as these plungers move back and forth on these actual piston rods, they cause a compression to go forward and the actual adapter that you have here sees the fluid and you have the pump face pushing against the actual discharge valve and pushing into the discharge head and creating your pressure. This side of the pump where your intake seals are and your actual cylinder moves through these holes this is what we were referring to that can leak and get pushed out of place if you freeze the machine and you start seeing water in the sight glass. As you're installing the intake manifold seal it's very important that you get the little spring that is in cased into the seal toward the intake water, as you see here, and press them into the, into the intake manifold, and then you're able to return the intake manifold, making sure that these surfaces are all completely smooth and are level with the manifold. You can observe a small groove in this intake seal and what you want to make sure is that this little ring that is on here faces you as you insert it into the seat and it'll be facing the actual ceramic plunger. We're looking at the actual ceramic plunger which moves back and forth in the adapter cup. And what we want to show you is that when you're reassembling this, there is a groove. Now there are two depths of those grooves. The deepest groove goes toward you as you're assembling. The first thing you must do is put the intake seal onto the ceramic plunger and then insert it into the intake manifold. making sure that the deepest groove is toward you. As you look at this now, you'll notice that there is a shiny side and a machine side. And as you're looking at the machine side, you want the machine side assembled onto the pump facing away from you so that that smooth machine side 
contacts the actual ceramic plunger. Next you would put in the spacer and the valve operating spring which keeps a tension on the valve face on the discharge valve. Then you have a nut washer and a castle nut which will be put on and adjusted so that you have just enough room to actually put the cotter pin in place. The spacer will prevent you from getting it too tight. Align the hole for the cotter pin and the castle nut. Then upset the cotter pin so as to not damage any parts in the pump and do that with a needle nose pliers bending half of it to the face all the way tight against the face the other half beneath the machine uh, f surface so that it's totally able to not touch any part of the manifold actual valves. A review now is that you want the smooth surface which is the machine surface and not the shiny surface of the actual valve face assembled so that it touches and faces the actual ceramic plunger. Next is a spacer so that you can tighten the castle nut against the spacer and not get it too tight. Then the operating spring which keeps tension against the actual discharge face and the castle nut washer and the castle nut and the actual new cotter pin. You'll notice that the pistons are operating as the motor is manually uh, actuated and causes the pistons to come back and forth. This is an important process that you can simply do with a screwdriver through the motor guard on the end of the motor while it is pre-assembled. You do not have to take the guard off in order to get it to function this way. As you move the cylinders back and forth, this is important when you have a problem with the actual pump pressure. Most of the time you will find debris beneath these actual faces on these discharge valves. The other day we found stones beneath the discharge valve. How they got there no one can tell you. But at least you'll know that when you lose pressure this is a critical point to look at. You do not have to disassemble the entire pump as we have done thus far but just pull the head off the discharge head and see if these cylinders are actually plugged up with any kind of debris. There should be about a sixteenth of an inch of movement of that spring and the face on the valve to allow the high pressure water as it's being compressed with the ceramic plunger to come forward and actually press against the discharge valves and give you high pressure in the manifold head. You'll notice on the adapters, the cylinder adapters, that there is a small hole on the one side and a large hole on the other. The large hole is what goes over the cylinder area. You put it on so it's facing you as you have your discharge manifold laying on the table. Now you're ready to reassemble this to the pump. And now, replacement of all of your bolts. The reassembly of the six bolts, again, are done with a actual six millimeter Allen wrench and put them in and tighten them to as even a tension as you can. Do not go on the Allen wrench with a bar or any other kind of leverage device. Only use the Allen wrench and tighten the bolts according to a good snug fit but not grunted into place.
There's also a mystery about the actual leakage that you'll find from time to time on the hose reel swivel. We'll show you now how to disassemble this properly and replace the cups that are inside. Now the disassembly of the hose reel swivel is very important and can be done in a moment even attached to the hose reel. You have a hose reel body and a hose reel stem which attaches to the actual hose reel swivel or the hose reel. So to take it apart the first thing you do is remove the little retaining half moon clip. Then remove the brass washer and separate the body and the stem. You'll notice that as you separate the body and stem there are two little cups that are inside the body. These have to be removed. In order to remove them, a little dental pick is a very helpful tool. But you reach in and just remove the cup. And as you take the cup out, you'll notice that the cup has a small groove on one side. And the two grooves have to be facing each other or facing the fluid. The way they work is that when there is pressure against these two grooves, they come out against the actual core of the, or the stem of the machine and cause the pressure to press against the body and seal it. If you put them in wrong, it'll just leak again. Then the removal is easy. The replacement is somewhat easier, so replace the cups with the kit that is available. And as you replace the cups, make sure they go toward the center of the body. Placing them on the, in the body, making sure they're level in the groove provided for them. And again, your little dental pick will be a handy tool to have for this job. Special nozzles are assembled at the factory and sent to you with your machine from Sebring Manufacturing. To put them together on the actual gun, you come up with several actual gun uh, wands that are available. You have a 12 inch wand and you have an 18 inch wand and you have what we call the drenching crook for use in the actual uh, uh, putting of material up into the baskets or you can use it for underbench spraying of your insecticides. Now the proper assembly of the nozzles goes as follows. The first thing that happens is you place the actual unit into the body of the wand, then you insert the core, and the core has a dimple on one side and no dimple on the other. The dimple should go into the strainer, and then assemble the disc on top and the retention cap. If you do it reverse and turn the actual core over so that the dimple is up, you will plug the hole on the mist nozzle and the unit will not function properly. Secondly, there are high pressure nozzles for 800 PSI that come with a 15 degree want, uh, spread on the actual fan and the zero degree which is for sharp cleaning. You can use this one for cleaning your floors and you can use this one for stubborn stains and uh, areas in the greenhouse. Then there is a drench that also comes. This is for full flow and it works at possibly 25 to 30 pounds pressure 
and you can use it for uh, putting on any of your uh, fertilizers and other things that you would drench into the pots. There is an adjustable nozzle and the adjustable nozzle comes as an option. We do not furnish that in the regular kit as we don't get quite the effective spray mist that we get with the regular Mr. Drench nozzle where we use the uh, basket, core, and disc.